Hello, my friend. Welcome back to my channel. So, if you watched my last video, you saw me do some copper flame painting. I love doing it. I've been playing around with it. Uh, I told you I was getting some leaves. Uh, I got the leaves in. Oops, if I can get them out here. Show you them. Got the little leaves. Fortunately, I do recommend, guys, if you buy these, they had, they sell them the blanks with and without the holes. I do recommend that you have the holes pre-drilled because I still have not been able to get them to drill through. I haven't purchased a drill bit specially made for copper or anything. I did see their metal bits, specific ones, but somebody had also suggested... Sorry about my dog, guys. Uh, somebody had also suggested that you could take and kind of punch an indention into the copper. So when I put my drill on it, it didn't spin around as much. Well, needless to say, that didn't work. Uh, I also wanted to give a shout out to the correct artist that I saw do this. I gave the wrong name yesterday. The other day I did put the correct name in the description box, but uh, it is actually um, Louise Sinclair um, Creations. She does some beautiful work. Uh, like I said, I watched her. Louise Singleton, sorry. I'm saying it wrong again. Um, but she just, she does beautiful stuff. So, I apologize for getting it wrong in the last video. Uh, I will leave a link to her description in the description box to her channel. Uh, so, what I've been doing, I've been playing around, if you guys can see this or not. Uh, I'm also going to try... At the end, I'm going to show you everything up close, and I'm going to show you on the white and the black. Uh, it is recommended that you do this on some sort of tile or something that is non-flammable, because you don't want to, of course, you want to set your table or anything on fire when you're doing this torch. Um, I do have a piece of white cardstock paper underneath this, hoping maybe you guys can see the colors a little better on here. Uh, I've also, like I said at the end, I'm going to pull the black out and the white, and we're going to do some up close shots and see which one actually shows the colors better. Uh, but I just want to show you a couple of the things I've been kind of working on, and we're going to kind of go over some of it. We're going to do a little bit more of the flame painting because I've figured out a few more things on it. So I'm really, really loving it. Um, so what I did, uh, I don't have the correct bells, but they, they make these that you can actually put. Let me turn my light on and see if that helps here. There we go. They make these that you can actually put on here. These have little ridges on them. I don't know if you can see the ridges or not there. Um, but I glued these on this on with E6000. So it's on there and you clamp it down. Um, if you don't mind the little ridges on here, I think it turned out really cute. I also have these stickers that I got at Dollar Tree. They're not stickers. They're uh, rub-ons, transfers. Uh, I have stickers. I mean, I have the all different kinds here. Have them in different colors. Dollar Tree has all kinds of stuff like that. You can use stickers. You can use anything. And then I tried a different clear coat. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Turned out really pretty. I'm going to see how well it holds up. Um, but what it is, is I use my same gloss varnish that I use from my acrylic paint. Uh, it works, seems to work really nice. It puts a beautiful shine on it. See that shine? And if you don't want to mess with the UV resin or anything like that, you don't have to. It's something easier. I am going to try spray paint, the spray gloss varnish, just to see what it does. But just to let you know. Another way I figured out how to do this, I played around with some wire wrapping on beads and stuff before. And I decided I was going to play around with this one. Well, I really played around with this one. Number one, when I put the clear gloss on, I added mica powder to it. Well, I added too much mica powder, so it kind of takes away from the color and the copper. But I did want to try that just to see if you can add like a clear, just a little toned down sparkle to it if you wanted to. I also used my wire wrapping, and I made this hanger, this wire wrapped around it, front and back. And then you just put your hook through here. And you can make a necklace out of it. These are the little flame earrings I did. 
I haven't done a whole lot with them as of yet. I just I did put a bezel on them to hang them, turn them into earrings. And this one's probably my favorite so far. I'm kind of like I said, I'm kind of starting to get the hang of how to do these. Um, my sister-in-law and brother live in Arizona, and I see so many of the beautiful pictures that they take out there. And when I got done with this one, I first thing I thought of was it just kind of looks like the Arizona desert. So, uh, kind of did a little cactus. I used my acrylic pen, paint pen. Very inexpensive. I got a set of, I think, four of them. They're 0.7 millimeter quick dry, non-toxic. And then I put that on here. This one does not have a coat of clear coat on it as of yet. Uh, because I'm trying to figure out which bezel I want to put on the end of it. Um, some of the things that I've got out here that you can do to them. You can put beads on them. I thought these faux turquoise ones would look pretty with them. Uh, this one here I'm going to make a necklace out of. And I'm going to hook two leaves from it. And then two loops up here and I'm going to run some suede through it. Uh, I have chain here. If you want to make them dangle, you can. Another set of beads that I think would look really pretty with it are these wooden ones. I thought those would be really neat. Uh, some of the other... One of the things you can do, you can either make your own, which is what I did here. I made my own loops to go through here. But you can also buy them. And what you do is you put this through your bead so you can see it but just see your bead and then you take your round take your pliers and you make curve it around into a loop and at that point then you can hook it on and you can make it into a necklace you can hook your leaves to it. And I'm actually going to hook one up before it's over. We'll hook a couple up just to see what we like. And make some earrings out of it. Uh, but I do want to play around a little bit with this copper flame painting it a little bit more. Uh, just kind of show you a little bit more of it because it is, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think we're going to do another disc and I think we're going to do two leaves. One of the things I'm going to do a little different today is, rather than quenching them, I've kind of gotten a little better colors, it seems like, without quenching them in between. But I do have to let it cool in between, so what I'm going to do is I have two of them going. So I'm going to heat one, and while one's heated and working, then I'm going to work on the other one. And vice versa, we're going to go back and forth with them. These are very, very pretty. Uh, you get 24 of them. They are 8.18 gauge, 11 sixteenths. So they are small. Um, this is a keychain ring. So this kind of show you how big they are here. So that way you kind of have an idea. All right. So we're gonna put one on here, and then we're gonna take another one. Okay, so one of the things I watched Louis Singleton's video again and realized that uh, one of the things that I wasn't doing, I wasn't getting the copper heated up the first time to a high enough temperature, I don't think. So when you do it the first time, you want to get the copper really, really high. It's going to change colors, it's going to turn purple and all different colors right here. But we're going to push it past that to the point that it turns kind of a silvery color. Like this. Now while that one's cooling, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to heat this one up the same way. I'm going to get it good and hot. Here comes the colors. And we're at the silver stage. So we're going to let those cool for just a minute. Um, I may still do one of these little rounds and we may quench it in between. That way there's not a lapse while we're waiting for these to cool down. They don't take very long. 
If you have a fan, guys, you can hold a fan on them. Uh, you can blow on them. <laughs> I've watched a couple YouTubers just do that. Most of the people I've watched that are doing this are doing with big torches. Big acetylene torches and stuff. And I don't have the big acetylene torches. All I have is little torches. I'm just a little operation here. Just wanting to kind of play around with something. Try to see if I like doing it. Uh, and so far, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, Louise Singleton is the only other person on YouTube that I have found that is doing it with the little handheld torch. I'm sure there's other people, but a lot of the videos are really old. So, I don't know if people just aren't into this as much, but I guess I'm late to the party, but uh, hey, uh, that's fine. So, one of the things I learned after you get it getting hot, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Let me get this one really, really good and hot. Let's see this. Okay, there it's going. See it turning silver? If you can see this now, the difference here between the copper disc and what it kind of looks like after you've got it heated up. It doesn't look copper anymore. It looks silver almost. Kind of a purple haze to it. So, okay, we got this one clinched. We're going to do it again. And we're going to lay that right here. We're going to let it set. So now... These should be cooled off enough that we should be able to come back in. I'm going to turn my flame down just a hair. And I'm going to come in from the side like so. And I heated it up. And do the same thing over here. And if you see, I kind of got a V pattern. Because I held it there and my flame split off. You can also, when you hold it, you can use your flame to almost cut a line in it. That's what I did here. I've got actually like three lines in there. There we go. I might have went too far with it. Alright, so that those are cooling right quick. We're going to take this one here. I'm going to dab it with a paper towel just to get this liquid off. I'm finding I don't like the water on it afterwards. I think that's part of it. I'm not liking the water on this. It's kind of like dry naturally. And I'm going to hold it in a different spot because if you see where I held it last time, there's a spot here. Now, if you want to hook your bezel up to there, that's fine. But I want to, I actually want to get this one to color as well all right so on this one i'm actually going to come almost straight down i want to get kind of a, almost a starburst pattern in the center can you see it change guys is that the coolest thing or what all right so i'm going to clinch that here i'm going to put that there and let it cool some more and then we're going to come back in, and I'm going to try to get some purples in the center there. Now, I'm going to come in from this side. I'm going to turn my flame down just a little bit more. Torch is running low. Very 
very very pretty guys I love doing this this is so much fun it's so neat seeing the different colors and I'm still learning that at a certain point once you get past blue you start getting kind of this teal color um, I'm still learning how you get the different colors to show up in the copper and what stage uh, one of the youtubers I said I watched said purple is your final stage before it goes back to copper again before it's too hot get here like my torch is running out I'm gonna fill it up guys I'm gonna put you on pause and I'm gonna fill the torch I absolutely hate filling butane torches so I will be right back with you that's gonna give you a chance to cool okay I'm back sorry about that I needed to fill my torch it's one thing guys when you buy if you buy one of these be sure you get an extra can of butane or a can of butane it does not come with one when you buy it on Amazon and if you're doing this, it does tend to use it quite a bit. So we're gonna we got torch all the way up again. Now I'm gonna try to do a line across here. You see here? At the line through the center. I almost took that one too far. How's everyone doing this evening? So, I'm hoping my videos guys are going to start getting a little bit better. I've got a bracket coming that's going to help me with my filming a little better. Um, I've got working on how to edit videos and stuff a little bit more I'm hoping that I can get better at this bear with me I appreciate anybody who's been watching through it all and I appreciate anybody watching period if you're a new subscriber thank you so much if you're just watching you know if, give us a like even if you don't feel like subscribing but if you really like what you see please subscribe it really helps my channel um, I really love doing this. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about talking to myself pretty much. But, uh, I am going to try to put out at least two videos a week. I do work nights. I am worked the graveyard shift, so if you've ever noticed, my videos come through really late at night. And that is why, because I work a 10 to 6 shift, and even on my nights off, I'm up like I am right now. So, 
videos we'll be posting later. Alright guys, I kind of like what's happening with these leaves here. I really, really like this. I'm going to kind of set these off to the side. We're going to talk a little bit about embellishing and how some of the different things work and how you do them while those cool off. And then we'll actually maybe hook those up and make something out of them. Um, it, as far as embellishments go, like I said, you can do beads. You can do just, if you don't want to do beads, if you get the ones that have the holes in them, like these, I'm going to show you. You can just put a jump ring through them. Uh, you can get the earring. You get a set that actually has everything you need in it. This little kit right here comes with a pair of tweezers. Get it on Amazon. It has all different kinds of little findings. It has little jump rings, big jump rings. It has this, these little bezel things that I used to, uh, E6000 on here. It has some that if you want to put on the end of your suede, and crimp it down has the ones that I put on here these little ones like this um, it's got screw hooks so if you do any kind of resin you can actually screw it in and make little earrings that way you have your lobster clasps and then you have these which are the little pins so uh, not a bad little kit comes in silver and gold they also have just the kits of jump rings uh, in the silver and gold finish. So I kind of have a little bit of everything. So what we may do is I think we may embellish one of them. I think we might do something with this one. What should we do? Should we make it into a... Should we put a flower on it? And maybe some leaves. Ooh, the heart maybe. I don't know guys, what do you think? You like them better without or with things on them? I like this greenery too on here. I don't know, what do you think guys? you think we need to put that on it or do you think I should draw something on there? If you're not comfortable drawing, you can do stencils, guys. You can order little stencils. You can get stickers. You can do the rub-on transfers like I've got here. There's a variety of different things that you can do. Or you can simply just clear coat it and put it on a chain. They're just beautiful like they are. I just think it kind of personalizes them if you can put some of these initials on them and give them to them as a gift. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to decide what to do on this one. Alright, so let, in between times for that, I'm going to show you just how simple it is to turn these into earrings here. This little thing here, <laughs> when I first got this, I was like, what is this for? It's actually to help you if you don't want to hold two pairs of pliers close the jump ring. So you grab one side with your pliers, stick the other in here. Ah, okay, well that didn't work because I was trying to hold it up high and do it. So hold your jump ring while you snap it in place. Really simple and easy. And I closed that before I had to eye. I had the earring part in here. So you're just going to take your earring piece and my friend, my earring is here. So I'm going to put that on like so. Have this hold it for me. And then I'm closing, close my jump ring. When I first started doing jewelry, I got this in a jewelry set and I was like, what is this for? So, here we have one pair of earrings completed. Like I said, guys, you can add to them. You can put beads on them. Whatever you want to do, 
You make them the way you want them. You know, this is all your choice. If you want to put different colored beads on them, you can. I'm just showing you some options here and kind of letting you know what you can do. If you get, when you get those jump rings just right, they actually snap. They kind of have a pop sound to them when they close perfectly. And we have this one done. Very pretty. Very, very, very pretty. Uh, this one here, I think I'm going to put it on a keychain. And what I like to do when I put it on a keychain is I like to put a couple jump rings on it. So we're going to do one first. Close that one up really good. We're going to take another jump ring. And you're basically making a chain out of your jump rings. It's not easy to do when you're holding it higher than eye level. I'm trying to hold it up here so everybody can see it on camera. I said guys I'm just working on getting used to this videoing I'm still not 100% on it yet but I will be improving as we go see I have the tube on here now two jump rings and I'm going to put a third if I drop the third one and then we'll get us another one on here And I'm going to hook this one through the keychain and through here. Okay, I was going to say, I just had it. Where'd it go? Okay, and we're going to hook the two that we had up to there. Close our jump ring. And now you have a keychain. Now on these here, are they done? Yes, they are cool. Alright, now sometimes these are not cool, so I'm going to, just in case. Okay, those are cool too. Perfect. Alright. Like I said, I'm going to bring you down, guys. We're going to come down here. We're going to take a look at them and see how everything's looking up close. Uh, this one here. I think I'm going to do a couple chains. I do want to clear cut these first. Uh, so what I'll do is, uh, at the end of the video, after I clear coat them and everything, I'll come back and I'll show you how they look. And let's see. I do want to show you how to embellish this so I think I'm gonna do one of the transfers because not everybody knows how to paint and draw and so we're gonna do one of the little rub ons here just trying to decide which one to do I wish I could talk to you guys I wish you guys could go do that one do that one because I know somebody's out there screaming go do it now do the art do the do the flowers don't do anything leave it like it is <laughs> so uh but yeah I can't so I'm just gonna run with this I'm just going to do some leaves kind of around the side here, on one side. Because I do love the way they look. They're beautiful like they are. But I sometimes I just, you want to add to it, you know. You want to add a little bling. Okay. No, I don't want the whole thing really. I think I just want part of this. So you position it on here where you want it. And then I have, you can use a credit card. I have a scraper that came with some of my resin, I believe. And you just rub the transfer onto your piece. And you lift 
slowly. And if it doesn't transfer off. It should start kind of turning a gray color when it transfers completely. But I've had a couple that didn't and still transferred just fine. And then we're going to give this one a clear coat as well. I think that turned out really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to bring you down. We're going to try it on the white paper, and then we're going to try it on the black. Um, I appreciate the input, guys. Please continue to do so. Let me know which one is better, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a ceramic tile, and uh, specifically for my copper, because this, I use this for everything. So I'm going to get one specifically for doing the copper, but I'm not, I'll know whether to get a black or a white tile. Uh, that's one of the things that works really good is the ceramic tiles to show you home improvement store and buy one. So I'll put you on hold right quick, put you on pause, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so here we go, guys. Okay, so this is on the white paper. I'm going to show you here. Turn this around. I feel like my camera's having a harder time focusing with the white. I don't know. But we're going to try it here on the black in just a minute. Like I said, let me know here. Alright, so I'm going to move this out of the way for just a second. I can do it without dropping it. Alright. So here we are on the black, guys. All right, so this is on the black paper. I don't know, what do you think? Let's see what the... Okay, so this is without my flash, guys. Is this any better? Oh, now that, that's pretty. Okay, so maybe the black, guys. I don't know. Let me know what you think. We are going to be making more videos of these. Because like, like I said, I'm really enjoying doing them. I kind of want to try bracelets. And I kind of want to try painting. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> this one here, I was kind of playing around with it. Besides doing the background, I actually took mica powder. And I put it in my gloss varnish. Put too much mica powder in, but I wanted to see if you could kind of bling it out and make it sparkly. And you can. And then the last two right here. This one you can't see too well. Let's see. What do you think, guys? I think this is my favorite. I'm not going to lie. Alright, well, guys... Till next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful, nice, blessed evening. Goodbye.